I aggravating you? Tom asked if he's aggravating me. Tom decided to pick up our Tritune today on a Friday afternoon after delivering a boat and has this beautiful idea to do what to our boat? We're gonna add lifting strakes, just like these, to the insides of the outer pontoon. Well, the whole reason there's a lifting strake on here is to give more planing surface because driving a round cylinder or a cylinder through the water is not real efficient. And I have a question. Yeah. Are there any other cylinders that are not round? Yeah, that's why I corrected myself. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for pointing that out. So with a 200 horsepower motor, we should be able to get this boat lifted better and get better all around performance meaning better fuel economy, better top end speed, better tube pulling speed and destruction. So that's uh, why I've never done this before. He's never done this before. Here's my theory on this. Uh, a lot of people say, well, how do you know where to put them? How high are you gonna put them? Well, we have this one to reference. This is a center pontoon, it's a Manitou. So I pretty much took the dimensions of this one. It's almost a 90 degree, maybe a little wider and People say, well, doesn't it have to be just so, or just this position, just that position? And my theory on all things pontoon boats and tritunes, and someday, if I'm wrong, great, I'll learn from it. I think that a lot of the pontoon manufacturers have made boats that perform well with lifting strakes in the position they're in. And I don't necessarily think that they're trying to tweak them by one degree or two degrees or a quarter of an inch one way or the other. Uh, if it rides well, it rides well. Why change it? Don't don't fix it if it's not broken. So that's why we're gonna try to mimic this as close as possible on our outers. And I think it's gonna end up working real well. So plant first part, I gotta make sure that I don't weld them too low to uh, where they're gonna interfere with the bunk. It's all gonna be TIG welded. Uh, that way I don't punch through. These are MIG welded, but they do it all day, every day at the factory. So their machine is set up just perfect for it. So I'm gonna play it safe, TIG weld it. I have more control that way with the heat. And I have 20 feet worth of strake for each side. I don't think we're gonna end up that long, which is totally fine, uh, but we'll use what we have and then we'll have to fabricate a nose cone for the strake itself with a couple triangles when we get there. Uh, we're gonna get into Finishing drawing this, we're gonna lift one side at a time and get one strake on and then come over to the other side and repeat the process. Really important, this boat, 22 foot tri-tune, homemade, has a 27 inch center tune, 25 inch diameter outer tunes, and 200 horsepower Suzuki four stroke, uh, last year, 2022 model. Last year, after break-in, empty boat, when I had the prop tuned as best I could, I got 39 miles per hour out of it. That was the best speed, just me in the boat, wide open throttle, trimmed out, hitting almost hitting the rev limiter, 30, 39 mile an hour. That's really important, I know, for a lot of you because you wanna know how this is gonna impact performance. So I do too, so that's why we made note of that, and we'll see what happens this year with the strakes on. River, what do you think? Don't care. Just wanna go for a boat ride. We only have like 18 foot of pontoon. Uh, gosh, are you being serious? What? You just shit yourself. <coughs> The pontoons lifted up. He just pooped himself and is gonna sand the inside of the pontoon. We gotta clean it. So, so it's actually not, there's not a lot of crud on is it. Is it called sanding? Yeah, it's a flapper wheel, sand it. So what I'm planning on doing is just running down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld about two inches of weld every foot. Cause that's about what these are, bring a little Three, that's every, in between welds is six inches. So, yeah, so if we copy that, just a few, that's not even, it's like two inches of weld every six inches. 
excuse me, uh, that I think will be good. So I'm going to just get under here and have Corey hold this end of the tape. I'm not doing anything you with you. To. And then, well, yeah, I'm going to get further away from you as I go. Okay, so, well yeah. then. That's... So I'll make a mark every six inches. I'll sand about three inches each six inches. And that'll give me my spacing and clean aluminum where it's going to go. So I think that'll be good. And then I'm thinking we will hold it up. We'll tack the bottom on and then I can, I'll know, or we'll just hold it on. I'll know how high it's going to be. And then I can clean the top of where I'm going to weld too. Everyone always talks about Gotta clean, clean, clean aluminum, and it's true. Okay, you gotta hold this side. Are you gonna start welding? Yeah. The plan is to tack everything, just cold tacks, get it glued on. Then I'm gonna go through and TIG all my little two inch stitches. Safety first. He says safety first and then he walks underneath the hilo. So it's actually safety third. Your thoughts on today? He's done with one side. So the all in all is A, the bunk board carpet is flammable. There was a fire. Uh, B, the hilo sinks down over time as you're working on it. But once I got a little rhythm going with the TIG, it actually went pretty smooth until I was like three welds from being done and I dunked my tungsten hard. I got probably a hundred times better at overhead TIG welding, where I'm sitting down real low. Never got to use my foot on the uh, foot pedal. It was all knee and back of my leg, but that little nose cone I made turned out pretty nice. The nose cone of the lifting strake welded right on there and it's welded all the way back. So about every six, eight inches, I think we did. And can't wait to get the other side done. And we're going to put this on the water tomorrow. We're back for day two. We did the starboard lifting strike yesterday. I'm working on the port side. We've got it hoisted. And I got everything cleaned where I'm going to weld. This is what we're using as a lifting strike. So these are 100 thousandths aluminum, bent 90 degrees. And that's pretty straightforward, simple. I basically just copied what the middle strakes, they were eighth inch, but that middle pontoon is thicker diameter. So this is a little easier to weld. It's gonna be plenty strong. I mean, it's not going anywhere, especially once we weld it every eight inches. So that's what we're using material wise, 5052 aluminum. Uh, this is our 10 foot piece. And then we cut that down uh, to 66 inches. So that is our front piece. And then I make a nose cone Essentially what I did is I took this, measured 16 inches, because that's how long I want the nose cone to be roughly. Then I drew a line back to each corner. I cut that out. That's gonna make it sit at an angle. So what I have to do in order to make it line up with the lifting strake that's on there and then make the bend down to the pontoon is I have to cut this basically at a slight angle this way to make it sit on. We'll show you that process when we get there. Uh, but this one that I had to bend the tip just a little bit to bring it into the pontoon I'm gonna get in here. Everything's clean Corey's gonna help me hold it up. I'm tacking it in with a MIG weld real fast and then I go back through and TIG weld everything the scariest thing is when those Tacks pop every now and then a tack has popped off and it scares the bejesus out of you because it's so loud uh, one of the other main things you really got to remember to do is pull any plugs that are in the boat. So these are the bung plugs on top. Uh, got to pull these because that hot air, you're adding a lot of heat to these. That aluminum is going to have that air pressure expanding. Last thing you want to do is blow out a different weld on the boat because you're trying to 
weld on something new. So drain plugs, everything, pull them out, play it safe. There's no reason to risk it. Might as well. Let's get to work. <laughs> what? What, bada was, bing, bada what was that? I don't know. What Are you wearing a diaper today? No. <laughs> I don't have any air left in me. I got it all out yesterday. <laughs> okay. So to make that, I take an end cut of our six by six 90 degree. I've measured 16 inches to a point, and then I run a straight edge across to that outside point, both sides. I'm gonna cut that out, and then I'll show you how we end up cutting it to make it line up correctly. So we're in underneath on the port side, and if I put this on and get the tip down close, there's a big gap. So what I gotta do is cut that angle so this can lay flat. We'll have to bend the tip just a little bit there to get it to sit flat so I can weld it on. And the other side, it ended up kind of just sitting flush and just inside of the strake itself. So we'll go for that same thing on this side too. So this is the best way I could find to do it. I line everything up with my circular saw. It's a big metal cutting blade, 12 inch. And I'm gonna go line my blade up just with the tip of this and that will allow me to cut straight down because I've got it laying flat. So if I cut straight down here, it'll give me the angle so it'll lay flat on the pontoon and line up with the strake. I'm gonna bend the tip down just the last couple inches, the big mallet, and that should set it right up. And that's how it fits up. We'll push this in tight. I'm gonna just tack a bunch. This will get completely TIG welded, so it'll be one nice smooth seam. We have a slight angle up. It's the same on the other side. So that should help just keep water flowing down under the strakes and getting us that lift. So that's the nose cone. That's all just tacked up. We'll fill any gaps with the TIG. Uh, get all that welded solid, the whole nose cone on. And then everything is tacked. Now I gotta get the TIG out and start working there. One thing I would definitely change if I did this again is I would weld my full length. So this is 10 foot plus 66 inches. I would have welded that together uh, to make it one continuous piece because I've got a little bit of an uprise, just a couple degrees. And on the other side, it actually has a degree or two of down. So I'm not too worried about it because it's towards the very front. I don't think we're gonna feel it or see anything, but we will know shortly when we test it. That is one thing I would definitely change is just make it just like this. This is a probably close to 18 foot long piece. If you can't get one solid piece, I would TIG weld that together the best you can to keep it square. You're gonna get some heat shrink from that anyway, but I think it would make it a little easier in the end to make it line up a little bit better. Just a thought. Welding is all done. So the things I mentioned, I would change in the future. I'd probably just make it that one length by welding the two pieces together. They come in up to a, a 10 foot long sheet at the local metal yard. So we had to seam them. So we have a little bit teeny different shape in terms of that last section, but I'm not too worried about it. It's kind of far forward. I think no matter what, we're gonna still get that bow lift that we're looking for. And then the back, the angle actually looks Really, I think it's pretty much the exact same. Uh, I'm actually, I'm really happy with how everything went and came together. So there's only one thing left to do. We're gonna put it on the water. It's time to launch this thing anyway, but yeah, let's go, uh, let's go figure it out. Remember, we started at 39 mile an hour at about 6,100 RPM was the best that I could get this to do. And that was with this stainless prop. This is a 15 and a quarter by 19 inch pitch. Well, let's see what happens. I'm thinking if everything goes as it should plan here up right up here, we're gonna need to go up in pitch for prop a little bit, which is okay because Suzuki makes a 16 inch diameter, which will give us a little bit more surface area. I think all around we're looking for better performance, not just speed, that'd be cool, but we have to be able to destroy 
teens and adults on tubes. And then also, if we wanna go for a long boat ride and go cover some mileage and not take all day, I wanna be able to do it and burn less fuel. And being lifted on a ride plane, I think is gonna help a lot. You got something to add? Yeah, I do. I, I never want to go fast. She doesn't, she actually hates. Like 20 mile an hour is too fast. If her hair's blowing, too fast. Why we built a tri-tune with the 200 horse is beyond me, the but only, I'm not here to figure it out. Hey, the only time we should go fast is when we're destroying people. Otherwise, we're, we're just cruising. Well, we're gonna go fast today and figure it out, so. I'm wearing a snowsuit. Yeah. It's like 65, 70 degrees, we'll be fine. Uh, so you're telling me we might have to get a new prop. Yeah. Hmm. This will be a good spare. It's in great shape. Alrighty. Always have a spare prop, guys. To the water. We're in for the first time this season to test this boat out. River's got a nap. A and a ball, of course. And we're heading to the lake where we can get up and go fast. We're on the water. It's a little rainy. It's spitting a little bit. A little bit. We're into a nice little headwind. That should drop us back down to 6,000 RPMs. And then I think we'll pick up a couple mile an hour. Hold so. on. So you went 39 and a half with me, River, and you on the boat. And you went 39 with just you on the boat. Just me. And the so that, that yeah, alone is improvement. In, yeah, improvement already. But I think the prop is going to be the next big change. Go into a 16 inch, probably by a 20 or 21 inch pitch to see what happens. So I'm really happy. Just the quality of the ride was awesome. So. What do you think, Rivy? Did you like it? Boss man? Boss boy? Just that like alone it? was worth it for the time. It took us about six hours to install them. Uh, it was about three, $400 in materials to have it bent and everything. But again, the quiet, you can just feel yourself pick right up. I like that a lot. We're gonna turn around, go fast back, and then we're gonna go dock it. Success. Are we really gonna go fast? Yeah. No. We'll report back when we change the prop, so watch out for that future video. Because we definitely, at the end of the season last year, just from the scum and stuff on the pontoons, I think, it was hard to get it up to 6,000 RPM, and right now it climbed up there no problem. So I think that had a little something to do with it too. I'm thinking a prop change is gonna make all the difference. So the, in a nutshell, we gained about three, 400 RPMs from the fall when we were running it last. So I'm gonna change props. I think we're gonna pick up a few mile an hour. The ride was fantastic. You can feel the boat lift, it's quieter. It's smoother, it's higher up. I think it's gonna be drier when it's choppy out. All in all, I would definitely install them again, and I will report back to you when we update the prop and another speed test. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.